Hey, what's going on everybody? Justin here, and in this video we're going to be going over a few of my favorite fantasy reads that I've read so far in the year of 2019. Uh, before we begin, I just want to apologize if I'm a little clumsy or clunky or anything in this video, because I'm going to be using pretty much my left hand for everything. Um, I had a nasty workplace injury involving um, an angry cat. So, you know, <laughs> I'm just going to have to, <laughs> I'm just going to have to deal with the consequences of that and do everything with my left hand. So if I'm a little more awkward than usual, um, I apologize for that in advance. Um, and that's why I'll be doing everything with my left hand. Um, <laughs> uh, but anyways, uh, back to the books. Um, like I said, these are going to be um, either books uh, that are the first of a series or books that are uh, comprised like the middle parts of a series, um, trilogy or series. Actually, I think only one, one's a trilogy and the rest are a lot longer than trilogies. So, um, anyways, uh, my four favorite fantasy reads so far of the first half of the year 2019. None of these were published in 2019. I think the most recently published one was 2000, 2017, I believe. So, yeah, it just ha happens to be what I've actually read this year. Um, I generally especially with fantasy i do not stay on top of things with like new releases or anything i just kind of read what i think looks cool or sounds cool or other people that i um trust their like opinions and tastes and stuff what they think is cool it's just sort of like what i pick up and everything um but yeah let's just uh go ahead and get right to it and in no particular real order or anything uh let's just get started uh, the first one is going to be Blackwing, which is the first book in a trilogy known as The Raven's Mark, which is just finishing up. Um, I think the third book is being published, um, I think, either this month or next month. So that's actually really cool. Um, it's by Ed McDonald. And this world is like the grayest gray thing I've read in a long time. Very much so reminds me of like The, uh, the Chronicles of the Black Company by Glenn Cook. If you enjoy that sort of stuff, uh, the setting is very gray, like just the atmosphere, kind of the environment, the world, um, very gray. There's a even part of the environment or the, the world building setting is known as the misery, which is just like this awful barren land, which is just bad, <laughs> um, where it's just all dusty and just crazy and scary and everything, uh, where pretty much there's no settlements or anything like that. Um, I guess it's known as the misery. Uh, but also the um, the characters, the moral ambiguity, everything is very gray <laughs> involving the characters as well. So pretty much, you know, um, it's just very bleak and grimdark. I'm not sure why having a book that's just super bleak in pretty much every way um, like entices me, but it does. Um, like I said, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and it definitely reminded me of the Black Company. Um, the main, the uh, the narration is really cool throughout the book because it's almost mostly um, first person through uh, the eyes of real Gal, uh, excuse me, Gal Harrow, who's like a former soldier now, quasi bounty hunter, who's kind of just there for money and just for something to do kind of running away from his past a little bit, that sort of stuff. Uh, but basically what's happening is in this really bleak uh, world, there's another, um, I don't want to say emerging, there is um, an evil force that's been kept at bay, uh, led by um, some like powerful beings known as the Deep Kings. Um, and the only thing keeping them on the other side of the misery from invading and basically enslaving everyone or torturing everyone or whatever, um, is this thing known as the engine or Null's engine. So it's kind of almost got like this like really steampunk uh, kind of vibe to it. And uh, this engine is just like a super wep like super uh, weapon, I guess, uh, powered. I don't want to say by batteries. It's by like magical batteries is the best way I can describe it. Uh, but it's this giant like cannon thing, which is pretty, uh, pretty epic. And, you know, when things aren't always what they seem, you know, the Deep Kings, the Engine, Galhiro's past all kind of mixes together into like this like crazy just situation. Um, but like I said, the whole time it's just super grim, just super dark, super bleak. I really enjoyed it. Um, I really love the turns of phrases that Ed McDonald used <laughs> throughout the book uh, with like Galhiro's kind of like a point of view, like his narration in his mind. Like a lot of the symbol, uh, the uh, metaphors and stuff he was using was, I don't know, just found them 
either like really hilarious or just like really just deadpan uh just highly enjoyable i definitely encourage you guys to check this out if grimdark is something uh you enjoy all right now for pretty much the complete opposite of blackwing um a series i've been really really enjoying is th white's the once and future king uh which is an arthurian um uh arthurian tale cycle and it's comprised of four books with a kind of a fifth book that was published sort of posthumously that sometimes is tacked on to the end, sometimes not. Um, but I've read the first three out of the four of this Omnibus edition so far this year, which is saying quite a bit considering I've started, I think, 25 series or something so far since I started reading fantasy, and I've only finished like two or three series or trilogies all, all together. So finishing three out of four in like a couple months is really good. Um, my favorite is definitely the first book, The Sword and the Stone. Um, but the next two books... Uh, Oh, the Queen of Air and Darkness and the Ilmay Knight, with the Ilmay Knight dealing largely with uh, Sir Lancelot. Um, and I'm getting ready to start Candle, with Candle in the Wind, which is going to deal, obviously, with sort of the death of Arthur and the end of the cycle and stuff. Uh, but anyways, I've been thoroughly enjoying it. Sword in the Stone especially, um, just the combination of whimsy with sobriety somehow combined together <laughs> just somehow makes for this, like, really uh, just charming magical but somber at the same time story dealing with sort of the raising of Arthur uh, from childhood into uh, the time he pulls the sword out of the stone becomes the um, you know the king of England and all that uh, I just found it uh, really enjoyable um, especially uh, with me uh, really enjoying like the life sciences and animal kingdom and stuff with most of the magic of the sword of the stone dealing with uh, Merlin transforming Arthur uh, into um, different uh, uh, animals and going off um, into those different uh, species is kind of an environment and learning you know the world through the eyes of whether that's uh, you know a bird of prey or a fish or a badger anything like that he's sort of learning all these different perspectives and stuff um, like I said through the eyes of a whole like well technically like you know a whole different species and everything uh, but it's given him many different points of view to understand things um, and then sort of his conflict between uh, uh, trying to either justify might is right and then his basically going against might is right and his sort of counter to that and sort of his inner conflict dealing with all that as, um, and then obviously with the later books dealing sort of with the especially with like the love affair between uh, Queen Guinevere and Lancelot and how he kind of handles that um, without like anger and stuff but uh, still keeping something of his dignity but also like obviously knowing that you know things just aren't great and how he has to kind of deal with all this stuff at the same time um i just found it really enjoyable but like i said i really especially enjoyed the first book uh the sword in the stone if you enjoy any kind of arthurian stuff uh definitely give this one a look uh and even if you don't like arthurian stuff if you almost like fairy tale retellings things like that um these books especially the first one Definitely have a lot of sort of that feel and that charm uh, to it as well. Highly enjoyable, um, highly recommended. Okay, and then next up we have uh, the book that started my quest into the Warhammer, my deep dive into the Warhammer universe. We got uh, Gero, Weapon of Fate by James Swallow. Um, this is the first Warhammer uh, book that I picked up. I picked it up for like $4. That It was on sale at some... Uh, um, well, it's not like, I always say a thrift store, it's not a thrift store, it's just like kind of like a salvage store where they buy stuff like when other stores like go out of business and stuff. Uh, but anyways, um, really um, enjoyed this book. At first I thought it was just going to be Warhammer stuff, it was just going to be like pulpy, silly, kind of silly writing, silly stories and stuff. And it definitely wasn't, I had no idea how big the Horus Heresy book series um, has become. This is book number 42 in that series. Um, I've since read, since reading this one, I think I've read five other books. But there's 54 books in the Horus Heresy, plus eight books that are like a subset that finish off the series. Um, that's the real ending to the Horus Heresy. Um, so yeah, like I said, this is a giant universe, especially when you consider the Horus Heresy is almost like a big, giant story prequel to the whole 40k universe and all that. Um, I know it's like a really big thing, especially with like tabletop uh, game gamers and stuff uh, with the miniatures and everything. I've never uh, done that. I've just been like really enjoying the Horus Heresy books. 
Um, but like I said, I've just really enjoyed it. The Horse Heresy deals largely with there's a civil war between the Imperium of Mankind, uh, which yeah, in the future, Horse Heresy being 30,000 years um, in the future, uh, the Imperium of Man, we have space travel and all that. We've been colonizing all kinds of planets and, you know, fighting wars like in other solar systems and stuff, all that. Uh, but basically, as mankind is expanding its, like, empire throughout the Milky Way, uh, eventually, uh, the driving force behind this expansion are the uh, uh, Legiones Astartes, or the uh, Space Marines. And there are 18 extant uh, legions of the Space Marines, um, all under the War Master Horus. But when Horus decides to basically strike against the Emperor, uh, for various reasons, as you find out in the um, earlier books, you eventually have a, what becomes a civil war between uh, the different Space Marine Legions, and then you have nine legions against nine loyal legions against nine traitor legions, and that is what these like sixty books are all about, dealing with uh, different individual characters, different events, different particular legions, different uh, primarchs who are the leaders of these legions and stuff. Um, like I said, it's just super expansive. Like if you want to get lost in like a sci-fi world, uh, this is definitely a way to do it, just because it's so. It's just so immersive and so gigantic. Like, it's literally like one of the grandest things, like, scale-wise, that um, it's got to be out there. There can't be too many uh, too many book series that are on sort of that magnitude. But it kind of makes it, like, just tons of fun learning all the lore and all the backstories of all these different characters and all these different events um, that you have to sort of piece everything together with um, tons of different books. And you don't even have to read all the books, uh, like, in, in sequential order because it kind of... There are certain story arcs that kind of go together, um, but like lots of times, the books can jump around from time, uh, time and place um, throughout the events of the Horus Heresy. So I think it's kind of cool. You can kind of pick and choose like your favorite, sort of maybe like your favorite Legion or your favorite characters and kind of follow them through some of the books and stuff without having to read you know, 20 books in between, um, everything like that. Like I said, this is kind of the first book that started it off for me and I was, I kind of just picked it up kind of going, ah, it was $4, like, you know, what the heck. Um, then I ended up like just really loving it and was like, well, you know, I'm just going to do fall down that rabbit hole of the Warhammer universe, basically. Cause of, so that's why I'm going with Garrow um, by James Swallow. All right. And lastly, for fourth book slash book series is uh, the gun. Well, technically, I probably should do The Price of Valor by... Django Wexler, uh, which is book three of the Shadow Campaign series, um, and I've also started book four, The Guns of Empire, and then I also have Infernal Battalion, but I haven't started that one uh, yet. This is a five-part uh, fantasy book series. Um, it, I really enjoy it because it, it's Flintlock Fantasy, which is my favorite subgenre of fantasy, if you guys have been following the channel. You guys probably already know that, uh, but what's interesting about this one is it's almost pre-Napoleonic. Uh, it's almost like I would estimate like kind of like the 30 years war or um the seven years war something like that like in the 1600s or, or uh mid 1700s something like that uh technology wise because almost everyone is dealing with actual just like black powder and musket uh musketry rather than um uh, like napoleonic era rifles or um afterwards so i find that uh really interesting like steam power really isn't much of a thing yet and it kind of gives it like almost the old time kind of middle ages feel um, that a lot of fantasy books have but it's just far enough into kind of the modern age that we have like you know just the early stages of firearms and it just comes across really cool it's a really good mismatch um the world building is really good we have like three or four uh kingdoms and em excuse me kingdom and empires um that are kind of clashing uh both politically militarily that sort of thing uh throughout the books um and kind of the uh, the tides turn on like several different sort of uh, uh, places and events, if that makes any sense. Probably not. That probably wasn't uh, the greatest way of looking at it. Um, and also what, one of the things I do like about this mag uh, this world is the magic system, while it's there and it's very important, it's, I don't want to say it's toned down, but it's very specific, I guess. Uh, most of the, Almost all the magic um, in this uh, universe comes from being essentially possessed by demons. Uh, it's not that, like, you're, like, just, like, some, like, rampaging, like, demon monster if you're, uh, possessed by a demon. Basically, they just kind of, like, live 
around your soul you know that's kind of vague obviously but they're kind of just like there and it's m more like having like a superpower in a way kind of without revealing too much more than just being like some kind of crazy evil person um so i kind of like that kind of twist on things and how it's not just like super over the top um uh, like that definitely turns me off for like uh my magic systems are like way too powerful or anything that in like the environment or the world building anything stuff like that i definitely don't enjoy that very much so like i said it's fairly toned down but still important um in this world the technology era is really cool uh dealing with it and also the characters are pretty awesome uh in this book series and for most of the books you have three different points of view um one of them being winter and glass here on the cover uh, probably my favorite of all, of all of them, who is a female soldier um, who disguises herself as a male since females are not allowed in uh, her country's military. But she's trying to also escape her past, or kind of in a way, and uh, she finds the best way to do this is to sort of just enlist in the military and volunteer for some really obscure um, colonial outpost in the first book, The Thousand Names, and that's sort of where the adventure all starts. Uh, but I've highly enjoyed um, this book series. Um, I thought the first book was really good. The second book was kind of a letdown a little bit, definitely, from the first one. Um, but I'm really glad I picked it back up again this year because books three and four... Well, books book three has turned out to be really great. And so far, book four is turning out to be um, awesome as well. Got tons of different uh, campaigns, tons of different political things going on. ton of, like, personal character development type stuff as well it's not just like guns uh firing all the time uh which definitely gets tiresome in uh fun long fan no i mean not necessarily guns but you know just like fighting battles and stuff all the time kind of gets tiresome um in a way uh but like i said it's definitely paced really well you got tons of different elements kind of combining um and not it's not just uh shooting all the time which definitely uh works for the best uh in this uh, book series. So anyways, like I said, that's just a nice plug uh, for Django, Wex excuse me, Django Wexler's Shadow Campaigns. Um, one of my favorite book series that I've been reading so far in 2019. So yeah, tell me what you guys think about any of these books, um, any of these authors. If you've read uh, anything, uh, other works by them, let me know down below. Tell me what you guys thought about them. And also tell me what your favorite uh, fantasy book of the year so far has been a fantasy is a genre that you read i definitely be glad to get some recommendations i'm still i'm always looking concerned that this is all i have are these three shelves well three and a half shelves here of fantasy um after i did the great culling of 2019 um i think i only had like four and a half shelves uh to begin with so like i said i've still got a long 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 way to go with all that stuff um and if you guys also, if you guys want to support me in any way, um, I do have an Etsy shop where you can get some really cool book-ish type stuff. I got like uh, custom bookmarks, some of the designs obviously that you can already get and everything. Some plaques and everything that if you like woodworking type stuff, give that um, shop a look if you'd like to. But like I said, leave your favorite fantasy book or book series down below. And always remember, if you're reading fantasy or if you're not, always remember, read victoriously.